Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on Dynamo Boom. On this episode of Dynamo Shorts, we're going to be importing information from Excel. You definitely need to check out episode 9, Exporting Information from Excel, if you have it already. That's a crucial step in this. So step one, we did that today. But maybe this is a work shared model, right? Maybe earlier this morning I exported the Excel using Dynamo. And in the meantime, when I was updating that Excel, I had a coworker go in and maybe delete a room, add a room, whatever it might be, right? So we're going to kind of replicate that, make sure that our Dynamo script still works given that scenario. We're also going to try to work with our Dynamo script in a, a little bit of a way to make sure that it will work with multiple parameter values and across multiple different project types, different models, whatever it might be, right? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and delete this room right here, this instruction room from the model completely, right? You can notice I deleted it from the schedule, which means that it is not a not placed room. It is gone. And <clears throat> in my plan, I'm going to go ahead and just place a random room right here in this. We'll just say maybe it's a janitor closet, right? So I've added a room. I've removed a room. My Excel no longer matches in some way, right? A room has been added and a room does not exist that existed within the Excel export. So we're going to talk about that as we work with it with our Excel and Dynamo. One important thing that we also want to keep in mind is that every element within inside of Revit has an element ID. So you can see here this element is 177328, right? That is how we are going to track the information from Excel to Dynamo to Revit. Right. Make sure that our room values all match given that number. Right. So when rooms are deleted and even recreated with the same number and same name, they do not have the same element ID. OK, it's very important to note. So you can see here I made some changes to my Excel. I maybe made a few number changes. I changed a bunch of the names, uh, uppercase them, changed some to unisex where there used to be a men and women, right? So lots of changes there that we're going to talk about. I'm going to close this out so that I can use it in Dynamo, which I will go ahead and open. And you can see here I just have a blank canvas, nothing in here. So the first thing that I need to do in my Dynamo graph is bring in import my Excel, right? So I'm going to find the file path so that I can path to that and the file from that path, right? So that it will actually grab the Excel. And in this case, I need the sheet name, which you can see here is actually looking for a string value. So I'm going to path this over to my string. And you can see it automatically re tries to read something, right? There's nothing there. I haven't given it a file to read. So I'm going to say read sheet one. And I'm going to browse to file room updated, right? And you can see now it opens my file and it's reading that specific file for me. Now, one thing that I also want to do is tell this specific Excel file to read as strings. So I'm going to actually tell this to be true, whereas the default value is false. Sometimes numbers want to be read as numbers rather than text, right? When we know that in Revit, it's actually a string value, right? Which is a text value. Link all that below in terms of data types and the video on that if you need a refresher. So another thing I'm going to do is go ahead and group these two guys because these are user facing inputs. I'm going to make them pink and say, this is my Excel info. So this is something that the user needs to specify. Maybe even go as far as saying, this is the sheet name that you need to specify and the Excel specify Excel file path, right? so that if there are, these are actual 
inputs, right? Make both of these is input, is input. Uh, within Dynamo Player, my user can still play with them, right? So wonderful thing there. So this is all of my values that are reading Excel, right? So I'll group those together as well. So the next thing that I need to do is essentially look at these values and start to understand them, right? In this case, I have my headers in my first list and all of the data in the rest of the lists, right? So I'm going to get item and list dot rest of items. So you can see here that I have my data and my headers. So go ahead and group this together, right? So I have my, my four headers in this case that I brought in from Excel and create a group here and call this Excel data, right? So now I know that my element IDs are at the index of zero, right? You can see that. My names are at the index of two. My number is at the index of three, so on and so forth. One thing that we do need to point out, however, is this is a single list. This is a list of lists meaning that I have multiple levels of data. The data for my actual values are at level two, and that's very important to note as we move forward. Link below on lists and levels, which also very vital thing to, to know about and to keep track of within Dynamo. All right, so now I can go ahead and say get the item at my index, right? So I first need to know what is the index of my element ID, right? Because once again, this is how we are going to trace my Revit element from Excel through Dynamo to Revit, right? And you can see here that it tells me my element ID is at the index of zero, right? So I can then say get items at index. So my index would be zero and of my list of data. Now once again, not the first list, but the second list. I'm going to use the second level of data, right? So now I have all of my element ID values. So I can go ahead, group these guys, and say these are my Excel element IDs. Well, I'm doing great typing element today. I'm <laughs> not so great at that typically. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. Now I can essentially do the same exact thing, but in this scenario, I actually want my user to be able to specify with a string, right? Same way that we did with our sheet name. And I'll make this pink so that once again, my user knows that it's user interfacing and say specify string parameter to update. Now that's very important. I'm not updating dimensions, right? I'm not updating locations or levels or whatever it might be. I'm specifically updating strings. The first string I'm gonna update is name, right? So you can see here, it tells me that it's the index of two, right? And then reports all of those items at that index at level two. We got all, our, all, all of our Excel data in this case, because it could be anything based off of the parameter that my user specifies or you specify maybe at a later date in a different model, right? So I'll go ahead and make this is input. Now that is available within Dynamo Player just as these are, right? So now that we have all of the data that we need from Excel, now we can start to query this against and update our Revit info. So the first thing that we need to do is get our Revit rooms, right? Now in this case, we could, we could be working with any category of elements, right? So I will type in category, 
categories, I suppose, create a group of this and say specify category, oh my goodness, of elements to update. Copy that into my categories name there, make that an input. In this case, I'm updating rooms, right? But as a user, you could be updating any elements within Revit that you exported and are importing back in. Now that I have my category, I need all of the elements within that category. So I now have all of my Revit rooms, all Revit elements in this case, because it could be any category of elements. And now that I have that, I essentially need to get these elements and their element IDs. Need to get these elements element IDs so that I can query against what I found in Excel, right? Because it may not match, right? Revit is not going to find room 213. I'm not exactly sure what that, that uh, ID is, but Dynamo and Revit know. Right, so I will go ahead and I will get the element.id of these elements, in this case all of my rooms, and I will make these a string because these actually are reporting as an integer, right? And we decided we're working as strings for now. Now that I have my string elements, I essentially want to omit any of the string values that are not found within Excel. So kind of in the same way that I did the list.index of and got the index of my uh, header and, and Excel values, in this case, I'm actually going to say find the element of my string element IDs for my Revit rooms against my Excel IDs. And you can see at the very, very bottom where Revit reports that very, very brand new room, room 213, I get a negative one because it is not found within Excel. So now I can basically say omit anything that is not equal to or greater than zero, right? So we'll do the greater than greater than or equal to zero filter by this in this case I want to filter all of the rooms within my model not the element IDs but actually all of the Revit rooms against this and you can see oh got my little inputs mixed up there you can see that I should get 90 in that first list and one single room being reported as not being found within Excel, right? So I know now that the in list are rooms found within Excel and Revit, right? So I can go ahead, I can group all of these values and say this will get elements included within Excel. Right. Okay, now that I have basically queried my element IDs against the element IDs in Excel, I can now basically ask these elements for their element IDs. All 90, I believe, of these elements um, found within Excel that are also found within Revit. Right, so I'll do some grouping here. These are all element IDs, right? And before I group these, I'm actually going to get the list.index of again to get the value of the uh, Excel element IDs, right? So I know where those elements fall within the list, right? So it tells me the Revit room within Excel is 0, 1, 19, 20. That's how my Revit rooms line up to my Excel rooms, right? So now I know how to path them together, right, based off of their 
element ID value. So now these are the element IDs of the elements included within Excel, right? So it's actually the index of included elements in Excel. Now that I have that, I can essentially, same way that I did over there, get the item at the index based off of this index and the values that I need, in this case, the Excel data, right? So it will report out all of those room names for me, in this case, because that's the parameter I'm looking for. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and I can do an element.set parameter value by name. My elements being the elements that are found within the Excel, the values being the elements from Excel, and the parameter that I want to update is actually the user specified parameter back here. I can just wire that over here and hopefully we'll cross our fingers, we see this run and all of our elements update. And you can see there that now we have our unisex, our room 213 got excluded, electrical, lounge, right, etc. Looks like I turned on shading some <laughs> with a shortcut there. So now that I have updated my Revit values, right, so update Revit elements, I can now play with what I want to update, right? So maybe in this case, I want to switch and change to the number and update the number. And we should see two, uh, two numbers change, right? Based off of the Excel here, I have 109A and 110B instead of the previous numbers that they were before, right? If I wanted to include additional parameters, I could 100% do that. Um, and using this, I can update any string parameter. That's this episode of Dynamo Shorts. Thank you so much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already, and take care.